women have the vote, at least on paper. The amendment passes and it's ratified. That doesn't mean that black women, yay, we can vote. No, now you're under the same restrictions that black men were under after the reconstruction period. It's an incomplete victory. Native Americans have to wait four more years to even be considered citizens. Chinese immigrants won't achieve full rights until the 1940s. People want to prohibit people from having free and unencumbered access because that means that power and resources will then be redistributed. And then who will that favor? And so there's this fear that's behind all of this. In the segregated South, an organized effort keeps black citizens from the ballot box. Residency requirements, poll taxes, literacy requirements. The very real threat of violence, of lynching, were visited upon communities who did try to exercise the right to vote, which was why there are vast communities where people didn't even attempt to try to vote. One woman brings the struggle to the national stage. Fannie Lou Hamer was born the last of 20 children to a family of Mississippi sharecroppers. Growing up in the Mississippi Delta, she thinks, well, voting could help change my economic circumstances, and so I am going to try and go and register to vote. She isn't allowed to register. Just for attempting it, she is fired from her job of 18 years and put out of her home. But she persists, becoming a voter and an activist. The bus that she's in gets stopped, and all of the people who are with her who are trying to register to vote, they are removed from the bus. Once again, women asking for their democratic rights are thrown in jail. Three white men came to my cell. One of these men was a state highway patrol. He said, we're going to make you wish you was dead. She is physically assaulted to the point that that assault has lifelong effects on her. This time, there is no public outcry. President Johnson pays no attention. But Hamer does not back down. Instead, she launches a campaign for the U.S. Senate. Though the longest of long shots in a district where only 5% of African Americans are registered to vote, she uses the platform to raise her voice. We are sick and tired of being sick and tired. In 1964, Hamer speaks at the National Democratic Party convention in Atlantic City. We want to register to become first class citizens. And if the freedom. She told the story of what was happening to black people and their quest for their natural born right to, to vote. Is this America? The land of the free and the home of the brave. Where we have to sleep with our telephones off of the hook because our lives be threatened daily because we want to live as decent human beings in America. She used her platform to tell a story that I don't think many people in the nation knew. She recognized that if the South was going to change, it was going to change at the hands of people like her. One year later, Congress passes a law to enforce the 19th and 15th Amendments, the Voting Rights Act of 1965. As much as we want the story of voting rights, not just for women, but for everyone in the United States, to be a forward trajectory, there are always new barriers that people find ways to put up. <laughs> 